Hey everybody, Chris Kresser from thehealthyskeptic.org. I'm going to do something a little different today. I've prepared a screencast of a presentation I made called I Have High Cholesterol and I Don't Care. Now I got the idea for this the other day when I got some results back from a blood lipid panel that I had, or otherwise known as a cholesterol test. And I thought I'd use the results as a springboard to talk about an issue that's surrounded by confusion and misunderstanding. And that's the connection between cholesterol and saturated fat and heart disease. Now the test I had wasn't just any cholesterol test. It was a VAP test or a vertical auto profile. Now unlike conventional tests that your doctor might order, this one measures risk factors that actually are associated with heart disease. Now conventional wisdom holds that high LDL and high total cholesterol both increase your risk of heart disease. This oversimplified view is not only completely wrong, it's contributed to the heart disease epidemic. Cardiovascular disease affects 80 million people in the U.S. today. It's the number one cause of death, and in fact, 4 out of 10 people who die each year die of heart disease. But if cholesterol was the cause of heart disease, then it should be a risk factor in all ages, in both sexes, in all populations around the world, and Lowering cholesterol should reduce heart disease, but that isn't what we see at all. The rate of heart disease in 65-year-old men is 10 times that of 45-year-old men. Yet a study recently published in the Journal of American Medical Association showed that high LDL cholesterol is not a risk factor for heart disease or for deaths from any cause in the elderly. Now isn't it unlikely that a risk factor for a disease stops being a risk factor at the age when that disease kills the greatest number of people? I mean, that's like saying smoking is a risk factor for lung cancer when you're 30, but not when you're 80. It's ridiculous. It just doesn't make sense. Nor is high cholesterol a risk factor for women. Women have 300% lower rates of heart disease than men, despite higher average cholesterol levels. In the recent conference on blood cholesterol, researchers looked at data covering 125,000 women from 11 major studies, and they found no relationship between total cholesterol levels and deaths from heart disease or any cause. Nor is cholesterol a risk factor in all populations, as Dr. Malcolm Kendrick is going to explain to you in this video. World Health Organization set up a study called Monitoring Trends in Cardiovascular Disease. I think it's just amazing uh, that, that you can see this data and still sustain the cholesterol hypothesis. What I did was just plotted the, uh, the cholesterol levels and the rates of heart disease in most of the European countries. Um, and I added into this graph the data from Australian Aboriginals. The reason for looking at Australian Aboriginals is that they have the highest rate of heart disease in the world currently. And so you'd probably expect they had a high cholesterol level. But, but when you look at it, what you find is Australian Aboriginals have the lowest cholesterol level of any population studied. And they have a heart disease rate that is about 30 times that in France and about 15 times that in the United Kingdom. And if you look to the right of this graph, and you can see that the Swiss have the highest average cholesterol levels of any population or country in the world, and their heart disease rate is about a third of that in the United Kingdom. And wherever you look, you basically see there's no correlation between cholesterol levels and heart disease. None at all. So what about the last criteria, that lowering cholesterol prevents heart disease? More than 40 trials have been performed to see if this is true. And researchers looked at the effects of lowering cholesterol on non-fatal heart attack, fatal heart attack, and on deaths from all causes. Now, some trials showed that lowering cholesterol reduced heart attacks and deaths, but other trials showed that lowering cholesterol actually increased the rate of heart attacks and deaths. When all the results were taken together, just as many died in the treatment groups that had their cholesterol lowered as in the control groups that were untreated. So the last slides have clearly demonstrated that high cholesterol is not the cause of heart disease. 
But there are some blood markers that we can measure that are stronger predictors of heart disease. The first is high-density lipoprotein. Low levels of HDL have been associated with heart disease. The second is triglycerides, and high levels of triglycerides are strongly correlated with heart disease. And the third is small, dense LDL, and high levels of this small, dense LDL are tightly correlated with heart disease. Now, someone's probably told you, or you've probably heard, that LDL is, quote, bad cholesterol. But this is oversimplified and incomplete. That's because not all LDL is the same. There are two types. First is the small, dense LDL, and we also have large, buoyant LDL. Small, dense LDL is strongly correlated to heart disease. You can think of hard little BBs bouncing around your arteries. They can penetrate the gaps in the lining of the blood vessels, cause inflammation, uh, which in turn contributes to heart disease. On the other hand, large buoyant LDL is not correlated with heart disease. You can think of big fluffy beach balls floating around your arteries. They can't uh, penetrate the lining of the blood vessels, and they may even keep those BBs from damaging the arteries. Now let's take a look at my test results here. Uh-oh, I've got high cholesterol. As you can see, I've got my LDL at 138 uh, and the, with 130 reference range, and my total cholesterol is 213 uh, with a reference range of 200. Now the sad thing is, a lot of doctors would try to put me on a statin with these results. The National Cholesterol Education Program guidelines state that anyone with a total cholesterol over 200 and LDL cholesterol over 130, both of which I had, should be treated. Now, in fact, I recently heard from a 22-year-old who had test results that were very similar to mine. Now, he's perfectly healthy, but the doctor wanted to put him on a statin, all because of slightly elevated LDL and total cholesterol, which studies have shown are not significant risk factors for heart disease. Luckily, I know better, uh, so when I got my results back, I wasn't worried at all. In fact, my numbers are really good. If you look at my HDL uh, here at 61, it's significantly higher than the lower limit of 40. Now, triglycerides at 42 is way lower than the uh, upper limit of 150. And if you look down at the bottom where it says uh, pattern B and pattern A, I'm well within pattern A. Now, pattern A means you have more beach balls than BBs, or more large buoyant LDL, which we know uh, is not a risk factor for heart disease. And pattern B means that you have more BBs than beach balls, or more small LDL, which we know is tightly correlated with heart disease. Now, you might have noticed that my LPA is also elevated. LPA is another subclass of lipoprotein. Some research definitely suggests that LPA is a risk factor for heart attack and stroke. The problem is that the tests for LPA aren't standardized. It should be measured in nanomoles per liter, which is a measure of particle number that's less influenced by the variable particle size of lipoproteins. Unfortunately, it's often measured in milligrams per deciliter, as it is here on my test, which is affected by particle size. So with large buoyant LDL pattern A, like I have, LPA is likely to appear elevated if it's measured in milligrams per deciliter, because the big particles are skewing the results. But in general, as a rough guideline, if it's measured in milligrams per dec deciliter, any value uh, for LPA lower than 30 is okay, especially when you've got large buoyant LDL pattern. If it's measured in nanomoles per liter, any value of 75 or lower is desirable. So now we've established that total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol are not important markers for heart disease, and that we should be paying attention to small LDL, triglycerides, and HDL. So the question is, how can you lower your small LDL and triglycerides and raise your HDL, thus protecting yourself from heart disease? Now, I'll give you a hint. The answer is not a low-fat, low-cholesterol diet. On the contrary, Dr. Ronald Krauss has showed in recent studies that replacing saturated fat with carbohydrates decreases HDL, increases triglycerides, and increases small, dense LDL. That's right, the low-fat diet increased all three significant risk factors for heart disease. Likewise, 
the more saturated fat one ate, the lower their risk of heart disease was. Saturated fat increased HDL, decreased triglycerides, and decreased small dense LDL. Now as you can see, this is basically a mirror image of what happens with a high carbohydrate diet. What about cholesterol? We've been told for decades that eating cholesterol raises the risk of heart disease. Yet studies show that cholesterol in the diet doesn't raise cholesterol levels in the blood in most people. And even when it does, it raises large buoyant LDL, which we know is not a risk factor for heart disease. What's more, University of Connecticut researchers recently published a study that showed that eating three eggs a day decreases the amount of small LDL by almost 20%. So what else decreases small LDL? Studies have shown that alcohol can do it by up to 20% as well. Now the French drink a lot of red wine and they have among the lowest rates of heart disease in the world. They also eat more saturated fat than just about anybody else. Now, researchers used to refer to this as the French paradox. They couldn't figure out how the French had such low rates of heart disease eating so much saturated fat. But now, after watching this presentation, you know that that's not a paradox at all. Still skeptical? Take it from Dr. Sylvan Lee Weinberg, former president of the American College of Cardiology, which is a very conservative institution. Now he says that the low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet may well have played an unintended role in the current epidemics of obesity, lipid abnormalities, that's high cholesterol, type 2 diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. Now he also said this diet, the low-fat diet, can no longer be defended by appeal to the authority of prestigious medical organizations. An example of this is the dietary advice given by groups like the American Heart Association whose job it is to protect you from heart attacks. Now, this is the American Heart Association's food pyramid. Suggests that the bulk of your diet should be made up of refined carbohydrates like bread and pasta and that saturated fats should be eaten sparingly. But as we've seen, carbohydrates raise every significant risk factor for heart disease while saturated fats decrease every significant risk factor for heart disease. So basically, the American Heart Association is telling us the exact opposite of what we should do to protect ourselves from heart attacks. And following their, their advice puts you on the fast track for getting a heart attack. So you might be wondering at this point, how has the myth that low-fat diet protects against heart disease survived in the face of so much contrary evidence? Well, eight out of nine doctors who write the National Cholesterol Education Program guidelines receive money from drug companies. Two-thirds of all medical research is funded by pharmaceutical companies. And the market for statins is $25 billion a year, which is the largest drug category by far. Now, these massive conflicts of interest prevent the truth from coming to light. So this is what the American Heart Association food pyramid might look like if it actually reflected the scientific literature. Healthy traditional fats would make up the bulk of the diet, plenty of protein in the form of meat and fish, adequate amounts of vegetables, and moderate amount of fruit. And notice what's not on here, refined carbohydrates, corn syrup, and vegetable oils, which are now the top three sources of calories for most Americans. All these years, what we've been told is that eating saturated fat and cholesterol raises cholesterol levels in the blood, which in turn promotes heart disease, and that avoiding saturated fat and the cholesterol lowers cholesterol in the blood and prevents heart disease. But what the science says is that replacing carbohydrates with saturated fat and cholesterol actually prevents heart disease, and that the low-fat, high-carbohydrate, or the so-called heart-healthy diet, promotes heart disease. So if you're interested in uh, getting a test done that will more accurately measure your risk of heart disease like I recently had, here's how you get one. Uh, there are basically three tests available. One is the NMR or nuclear magnetic resonance test and they put plasma in an MRI device uh, at, which characterizes the lipoproteins. 
The second is the VAP test or vertical auto profile, which is the one I recently had done. And that one spins the plasma at high speeds, which separates the lipoprotein particles. And the third is the GGE, um, or I believe that's called the gel uh, electrophoresis. And it's also known uh, by its brand name of the Berkeley Heart Labs. And this one uses gel with an electric field that causes lipoproteins to migrate based on their particle size and charge. Now all these are good tests and they're all validated by a lot of scientific data. The NMR might be superior in a couple of ways. Uh, some people say it's a more accurate measure of small LDL and it's the only one of the three that measures uh, intermediate density lipoprotein or IDL which is a, a postprandial or postmeal lipoprotein. Now, the NMR and the VAP are available without a doctor's prescription from privatemdlabs.com. And the last time I checked, the NMR was $80 and the VAP is $100. So these are definitely affordable tests with, uh, and far more accurate, as we've seen, in terms of measuring your risk of heart disease than the standard LDL and total cholesterol tests. So that's the end. I hope you learned something useful. If you'd like more information on this topic, I've written an entire series uh, of articles on heart disease and cholesterol on my blog. You'll find more than 15 articles there, all extensively referenced with downloadable handouts, including 13 steps to preventing heart disease naturally. And there's also links to off-site resources and book recommendations and you know places to visit if you want even more information uh, than I have there on my blog. So thanks for watching the presentation. I hope this information has been useful for you, and I hope it leads to better health for you and the people you love. So any questions or comments, uh, feel free to come to the blog, and um, there'll be a post here with this video, and you can just leave the comments there, and I'll get back to you. Thanks again for watching.